Hi everyone, Cody here. So today I'm trying to invent a water pump that has no moving parts that can wear out. This is uh, kind of for my uh, enclosed ecosystems that I've got, you know, to pump water around indefinitely. And I'd really like it to be solar powered. So this is my first uh, prototype here. It's using a thermal siphon type effect, which I'm seeing if I can stack together and multiply the force that the thermal siphon can have. So I've got uh, two glasses with water, well, they're plastic. Uh, the water level is at the same height because water does that, it seeks the uh, gravitational uh, gradient that is the same. And so what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna heat this side and cool this side, and we're gonna see how much the water moves up on this side, if it does at all. And hopefully more than what you would expect just from a little column of uh, warm water. was underwhelming but it did work you can see the uh, I should use colored water you can see there is a definite increase in the height of the water over here and over here there is a decrease about the same amount too as you'd expect in fact, if I add those two heights together, I probably get right about a centimeter. So not a whole lot. But then, the height here is not very much either. Let me actually go through and calculate how much I would actually get if there was just a single loop. Okay, well we got... Looks like 40... Let's call it 45 degrees centigrade there. It does have ice in it, so maybe I should just say it's zero. But it is only zero at the top. The bottom of the jug appears to be about five. So we've got a column height of about 140 millimeters or 14 centimeters. Uh, this here, which we will double, uh, that's six millimeters, so uh, let's call it 12 millimeters for the total displacement we got. And here's how the density of water changes with temperature. So if I had a column that was a meter tall and another column, the same height, one was full of water that was four degrees and one was full of water that was uh, 45 degrees, a uh, density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter on this, the cold side, and 990 on the warm side. That would mean that the differential over about a meter would be about one centimeter. So the uh, the water on the warm side would be pushed up by the cold side by about one centimeter, so one part in a hundred. Uh, with this, uh, 14 centimeters, I would expect 1.4 millimeters of uh, displacement. But I'm actually seeing 12 millimeters. <clears throat> so this thing does appear to work. Uh, so I've got, how many, how many stages does this have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. If I multiply the the 1.4 millimeter, you know, 0.14 centimeters times nine, look at that, 12 millimeters. <laughs> uh, it worked exactly as I thought it would. That's brilliant. I mean, I was kind of hoping to see something push the water up really high, but this is this is a result. Cool. Let's, uh, let's build a little bit larger scale version of this.
So here's the larger version that I've come up with. It is six feet tall. It's uh, got glass inside of a box so that the sun can heat it instead of using hot water. It's got 22 wraps of the tubing. So that's over 260 feet of this black tubing. And I'm expecting a head. Well, I suppose it depends on the temperature I can get, but uh, assuming I can get a 30 degree a differential, then I should be able to get over a foot of head off this thing. So I'm just sticking it up against this so it can have a nice good view of the sun. Now, actually I have two sets of tubes in this. One that goes around 22 times, one that just goes around once. And see, the once around has already got a displacement of uh, just under a centimeter by the looks of it. And considering that the main pump has 22 loops, I should be able to achieve 22 times this height right here. And the one that goes around 22 times, uh, we might actually have a problem here. <laughs> I used to have a bunch of air up in this line and it's pumped that air bubble around. <laughs> it's probably making the rounds already. <laughs> so it does work. <laughs> so the temperature of the shade behind the thing is uh, eight and a half centigrade. Half the tubes are in the back here in the shade, right? Then half are over here in the heat. Now if I stick this thermometer in to the hot side, we can see just what this temperature differential is. That's a tight fit. I ought to ream that out. All right, that's a little easier. Just stick that thermometer in there. Now we'll be able to see what the temperature is in there. But you can see already, that the water's being pumped up at least four inches. That's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to see past the condensation, but it looks like the uh, temperature is about 41 and a half degrees centigrade right now. So that means I've got the 30 degrees uh, differential that I wanted. Excellent. So yeah, we should be getting about 1% of the total uh, column height worth of displacement. So, you know, this four inches is nothing for it. But of course that's the maximum displacement. I'm not sure if I raise this up, it would pump slower. Because it has to actually heat the water more before it can finally force it through. But yeah, this uh, four inches of displacement seems to be working just fine. Of course that will increase as this gets pumped down up to about you know, probably 30 centimeters or about a foot worth of displacement uh, once this is almost completely gone. We'll see if it's able to do that by the end of the day. I kind of have doubts. So this thing is going to be really inefficient. You see, in order to pump through the amount of liquid that's in one of these uh, tubes going up, you know, to pump that volume up, it also has to heat not only that much of the cold water, but also that much of the cold water that was on the entire uh, back side. So in order to move just one of these volumes, which might be around 10 milliliters, it has to move 22 times as much. See around here on back, the tubes are still very warm. See, something like almost 100 degrees there, 37 degrees centigrade. And they have to cool off, they have to radiate away their heat. And it looks like it takes all the way down to here before they get down to the uh, temperature of the shadow, see. So not only do I have to heat the water, I also have to radiate away that heat 20 some odd times to pump just one little bit of water through. Yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement with this design. Like some sort of heat exchanger to cover the heat is definitely needed. But it still works. I'll see if it's able to pump that uh, jar into that jar by the end of the day. I've got my time lapse set up. We'll see how it does. Well, while that's doing its thing. I wanted to show you guys kind of how I came up with the idea. So if I had two columns 
They're both full of water and they're connected at the base, just like this. And uh, on one side you've got it warmed up. So you got a heater or something on this side, just like that. The water in the side that's being heated is going to expand. And if this is a 30 degree difference, that should be about 1% of its volume increase. And so if you have your water level here, and this is a meter tall, you would find that your water level in the warm column is now one centimeter taller than in the cold column. That's because the cold water and the uh, warm water have to have the same amount of weight of water on either side. So the pressures on either side down at the bottom are equal. If this level is lower, the pressure over here, because there's less dense, there's less water on top of it, the pressure will be lower, and the pressure over here is going to force it through this side. Now to increase this, uh, this height, this head right here, there's a few things you can do. One is you can heat up the water even more, make it even hotter. But eventually, you're going to wind up with water that's boiling. Or you're just wasting so much heat. Another thing you could do is make this much taller. That would make this 10 centimeters now, right? Because it is proportional. But eventually, you're going to run into a problem if you start doing this, where the pressure at the bottom of these columns is going to be so great the water is going to start spraying out, right? Uh, even if they're made out of metal, that's a lot of pressure. The uh, thin plastic uh, tubing I'm using, if it's warmed up, uh, I wouldn't trust it beyond that, pretty much. What I thought of doing is add a reservoir up here, right? Let the water flow over into it. Now you can pump the water from a lower reservoir into a taller one. You know, they're only a centimeter or so different, but that difference is there. Now what I can do is take the water from this reservoir once it's cooled down and run it into another column. And now I can have another reservoir up here and continue going. Eventually I can just stack the heights more and more and more until I've got water pumped up a hill, essentially. But then I realized the pressure is going up, right? Well, what do I need the uh, reservoirs for? Why don't I just simplify it and just run the water straight across, like this. Basically use the tube itself as the upper reservoir. And so now, after I've got, you know, four things, the same temperature differential after heating and cooling and heating and cooling, then I've got, you know, four centimeters of head. It's not an efficient way to do it, but this does work. And if you uh, somehow added like a heat exchanger or something in here, I'm not really sure at the moment how you do that, you know, somehow get the heat from this uh, tube to go over to here, to heat this water up as it's going into the next column, you could make it more efficient. Now, I'm not sure if I've invented this. I, I'm pretty certain I haven't. It's so simple. Somebody must have come up with it. But I haven't seen something like this in a simple Google search. So, there you go. I was thinking a possible use for this would be my shrimp boxes. I think I mentioned this earlier. If I had a bunch of these boxes on top of each other, and I had uh, grass and moss and water down at the bottom, uh, eventually the water, especially if these are connected, the water's going to migrate down. You know, the water vapor might come back up, but salts and stuff are going to go down and get trapped, you know, just like they do in real life, but in uh, salty lakes. But I don't have rocks and geologic processes bringing those salts back up. So I need something to bring the salt back up. And I don't really want to use like a little pump or anything. So I was thinking what I might be able to do is make a whole bunch of a real thin glass tubing, some capillary tubes, and wind them between a hot and a cold reservoir, and get this to pump up. Even a single drop of uh, salty water being pumped up every day would be enough to sustain the system. Anyway, that's uh, one possible use for this that I thought of. Eh, it looks like we're pretty much done. 
this uh, shadow from the house has moved over onto it and I, I think it's actually stopped humping. It's been almost exactly an hour. It looks like we moved around 200 milliliters, give or take. Up four, five inches. And yes, I am aware that a solar panel this big hooked up to an electric pump could have pumped a, a jar full of water all the way to the top of this in a couple of seconds. But that's not the point of this test. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.